getting by that way. But it wasn't until I had the surgery, and, and literally afterward, uh, when I opened my eye, I could see colors I didn't even know existed. Um, my, my sight has got, had gotten so bad that I had forgotten what the world's supposed to look like. You know, pinks are pink, and <laughs> reds are red, and blues are blues, and, and I, I had no idea that the color I was seeing was actually being affected by my not being able to see through a lens that had clouded inside my eye, is what it is. And they honestly, this is one of the things Sarah was talking to the children about related to hearing. Today, it's different than it was even for my grandmother. There are so many ways that they're able to help us today. When my grandmother was blind, it was cataract. She, in fact, it's still the number one reason people who could see become blind. So I thank God today that not only did Jesus touch the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf, but God has provided ways for us in the day that we're living to have some resolution of those things in ways that allow us to continue to have a full and richer life. Because I can tell you, being able to see colors again is an enormous thing in my life. It just is. <laughs> um, and that month I'll be able to go with the other one, which is the plan. <laughs> and, uh, and just, it, I'll probably have to talk about that for a, a week, <laughs> not just a couple minutes on a Sunday morning. Um, but I do thank God for that. And, and it really brought home for me this lesson from God's Word, which is a part of the planned readings for this week um, in, in what we call the lectionary. But for me, it really touched my heart and touched home because I realized how isolated we can get, not just because of my eyesight and the experience of that, but I have realized through some of what the church is going through and what people's lives go through, that we can become very isolated and not even realize that we are. And I think about this, this man who had no hearing and could not speak and in a time when there was no help for him. The time of the New Testament when the hope that he had was lost. He, he had no avenue to help him to be able to hear again and therefore he could not speak. And the impression you get, really, is that he had been perhaps deaf all of his life because he, he didn't speak. And if he did speak, he couldn't be understood. And so he missed out on one of the richest parts of being human, and that is community. The ability to communicate with others and to be able to hear what's going on, to be able to participate, to be able to speak, to be able to be included in whatever is happening. The beauty of this story is this man who could not hear had some people who loved him. <laughs> Praise God, he had some people who loved him because he would not even have known Jesus was in the area. How often, and maybe you don't even know how often, but I can tell you as you and I live our lives of love and faith in God and love toward others, you, whether you realize it or not, are bringing people closer to God. Even if you're not specifically talking about your faith, when you live in love and kindness, forgiveness toward others, they see a witness of God living in your life. And you help bring them to Jesus. This man who couldn't hear and had not been able to hear, therefore could not speak, is brought to Jesus by people who could hear, who were witnesses, and in a foreign country. The context of this story is that Jesus had left where he was in Israel because he was exhausted, and his disciples were exhausted, and they tried several times to stop and rest. Kind of like that preacher story I was telling you earlier. You know, you think, oh, if I could just get a night's rest. <laughs> It just doesn't work out. Well, that's how it was for Jesus and the disciples. I know you all want to believe Jesus never grew tired, but he was in a human body. That's what's so significant about the story of God coming incarnate into the body, into a human form, 
If Jesus wasn't tired, if he didn't get hungry, if he didn't feel sometimes sad, he wouldn't be human, would he? It's really important to remember that as we think about who Jesus is and who he is to us and what he wants to be for us. And that's that he understands fully, completely, what we experience. So Jesus is very tired and he has left Israel so that he can go and rest with his disciples. But guess what happens? Guess what happens? Comes to those 10 cities and people are bringing him the sick and the suffering because they have heard of him and they know what he is doing and they recognize him as a worker of miracles and a healer. And though Jesus always wanted to refocus the people on his teaching and his preaching so they could hear who it was he represented as he represented God incarnate in the world, Jesus always tried to refocus the people to help them understand that he's there to teach and preach about the kingdom of God. He was there as a healer, but his primary reason for coming was to teach us how to live. But even in this far place, in these 10 cities, because Decapolis means 10 cities in Greek, among these 10 cities in the foreign country, they still find him. And they bring to him, among others, this man who cannot hear and cannot speak. The story tells us that Jesus takes this man aside. And I do believe it's because Jesus is wanting so much for the focus to be on his teaching and his preaching. And also because he wanted to keep the dignity of this gentleman who didn't need people surrounding watching. And it's really a beautiful story. Because it's a story of how Jesus in an intimate way, touches this man's being, his body. He actually takes his fingers and places them in the man's ears and prays that they will be opened. Ephatha, be opened, he says. And he takes his own spit. This is what the scripture says. He takes his own spit, Jesus does, and he puts it on the tongue of that man. His ears open and he speaks plainly. When Christ lives within us, when Christ lives within us, and, and this is not to say that we can't see or hear, somehow we're not representing Christ because we are in all things. But to be able to communicate, to be able to share his gratitude for what God had done was a witness for the gospel, for us to share our gratitude for what God has done and to tell other people what God has done in our lives has a power to it that is so much more than a preacher trying to tell people how to think about God. You as a witness for Christ, you as a witness for the God who has healed your life and taken your broken heart and remended it, for the God who is there in your darkest moments, for the God who is able to take you out of the depths and bring you to higher ground. For you to tell those stories as you know for sure that deaf man no longer was deaf but now able to hear and see. When that man spoke, people listened, didn't they? When he spoke of what God had done for him. And that is what we do as we go from here. Not only receiving the healing power of the living God, but going to tell other people the story of how Christ has touched our lives. I don't know that I could tell you all of the times in my life with less than at least two or three weeks to tell you about it, that God has come into my heart, my life, my body, and brought healing. And if you are still here and you've lived any length of time at all, if you think about it and you look back on your life, you will see so many occasions when God has brought you through. We are set free in Christ. That man who couldn't hear, he was set free in Christ. He was touched by the power of God. He was literally touched by Jesus. And the scriptures tell us they were all so excited, even though he said, please don't say anymore, don't tell it, don't tell it, don't tell it. Why do you think Jesus said don't tell it? 
partly because he was still trying to get some rest, do you think? <laughs> it's just possible. And also because he knew that the more of that kind of miracle that was reported about, the closer he was to the cross. And he had work to do, and he had teaching and preaching that still needed to be done. Jesus loves you. He wants to open your ears so you can hear. He wants us to be agents for him that listen to other people and hear their brokenness and love them enough to be there for them. God wants us to be people who speak a word of good and kindness, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, so that others will be set free too. May all of us who have the gift of hearing, the gift of speaking, take that gift now and into this week. Listen carefully and speak words of encouragement that others, that we, may be set free. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you this day for the mercy of Jesus for the reminder that you have come in him to show us, yes, how to live. And yes, as you heal the hearing of the man who is deaf and mute, you want to heal us to help us to carry the message of your love and your grace, to listen with our hearts to the needs of others and to the concerns and the pain that they may have so that our lives can be truly used of you for the healing that you still do in this world through our lives. In Jesus' name.